get that up. Welcome to the Magic Marine Morning Show here in Helsinki. I'm your host, Bo Outeridge, and today is the fourth day here at the 2014 Seiko 49er and 49er FX European Championships. I'm joined today by two guys who have won world championships, Olympic medals, and helm on opposing America's Cup teams at the moment. But first, let's take a look at the highlights from yesterday. Day three for the 2014 Seiko 49er and 49er FX European Championship was the last of the qualification rounds, the crucial cutoff for the top 26 to progress to the gold fleet and title glory. After yesterday's flat calm and no racing, it was all on today with good breeze and tough conditions, with the women's fleet out first. Out on the water, capsizes were the order of the day, Brazilians Martin Grail and Kahena Kunza are now top of the leaderboard, with yesterday's leaders McGregor and Best dropping to fifth. In the men's fleet, experience and boat handling were the key to today's conditions, and the current Olympic gold medalists Nathan Outeridge and Ian Jensen from Australia were on fire, scoring one bullet after another, rocketing them to sixth overall after the first day's middling performance. First overall is the French team of Manu Dayen and Stéphane Christidis. As we enter the final races, things are expected to heat up. The top teams are racing together in the gold fleet. And with the races streaming live, we encourage you to check out what is sure to be some thrills and spills action. I'm happy if you throw it once I ask a question. Oh. Welcome back, guys. Hope you enjoyed the highlights. I'm now joined by the 2012 London uh, Olympic silver medalist Pete Burling from New Zealand and also London gold medalist Nathan Outeridge from Australia. Welcome on the show. All right, so, Pete, you guys are now tied on points at 23 points in fifth place, but you're also joined in that position with uh, jo Jonas Wara from Denmark. He, uh, so there's a three-way tie between three gold well, medalists from the Olympics. Um, do you guys, you and your crew, Blair, do you have uh, any aces up your sleeve for finals? Yeah, we obviously had a pretty tough day yesterday out on course C. It was uh, pretty windy and um, yeah, we were pretty happy just to avoid the rocks, uh, to be honest. We had about three cap sizes and uh, yeah, I think we were leading all of the races at some stage and shed a bit of blood to the cause. But no, we're really happy with how the boat's going and uh, it seems to be going pretty well around the racetrack and all the, all the little things we've been working on since here have gone well. So... No, we're really looking forward to getting into the final series and I'm sure yeah, we're only like 10 points off the lead now so um, yeah it's, it's just one good day away and um, yeah I think it's the same for everyone you just got to keep keep knocking off good scores and, and keep performing. Yeah rightio well Nath you guys had a shaky start you and your crew Ian Goobs Jensen uh, but do you guys have what it takes to climb all the way to the top? Yeah I think you know our first day it wasn't so bad we got a I think like a nine or seven and we won the last race and we were, we were over the start so that sort of <clears throat> put a lot of pressure on us for yesterday with missing day two of racing and uh, yesterday we had quite a good day uh, we won three races and had a fourth in the first race so you know everything's starting to come back together for us it's been a while since we've done a lot of racing in the class and um, to be honest we're just really excited to be you know in gold fleet and um, and racing against the best guys and uh, in the background here, the weather's turned it on again. We're going to have in the teens to low 20s probably for the next three days. So probably some of the best golf fleet racing we've had all year. Well, that's fantastic because we've got it all coming to you live over the next few days. So I'd now like to talk about your partnership. Uh, you guys have been training partners for quite a while, but um, Pete, maybe you can give us a, a little bit of an update of like how it all started and what, uh, where it's going. Yeah, well, I think it all started kind of back in maybe 2008, 2009 when we were pretty fresh into the 49er. I hadn't really done anything and we kind of, yeah, got in contact with Nathan, 
really wanted to do some training and, and try and upskill ourselves and yeah, eventually we, we started to form a bit of a partnership towards uh, London and yeah, we did a lot of, lot of training together before that and yeah, as you can see we both did pretty well out of it getting the, the gold and silver medal so yeah, really really happy with that relationship and then uh, yeah, this time around we're, we're slightly different uh, obviously we're not doing quite as much sailing together but we've definitely got a lot of, a lot of other commitments as well but yeah, we still do a lot of training together at these events and, and building up to it. All right, Nate, does that check out to you? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, what we identified after the Beijing Olympics was that um, when you get to the Olympics, it's always nice to have a training partner who's going to be at the Olympics. And if you're always in your own squad in your own country, when you finally get to the Olympics, that guy that you do the lineup before the start or you check the race course out with, they're not going to be there. So um, it worked really well for us to have our Australian squad of four or five boats <coughs> We were training with Pete and Blair and we also had um, the Irish guys as one of our training partners and it just sort of gives you that um, little boost that sometimes you need because often when you're sailing within your own country you work together as a squad but you're also trying to beat each other for selection whereas you know Pete and I there was nothing between us it was like the whole goal was to train together as hard as we could help each other get as good as we could and then hopefully at the end of the Olympics we'll be fighting it out for gold and silver and it kind of panned out that way, except we were quite a long way ahead of the fleet. And by the time the medal came, race came around, we just sort of didn't even need to go sailing. So uh, it'd be nice if it happened again. Yeah, well, that does sound like pretty formidable to have that kind of training partner. Um, now, are you, you guys, Nath, you want to answer this one? Are you guys training together anymore or have you done since 2012? <coughs> and if not, why? Oh, it's been, um, <laughs> for both of us, probably pretty breezy since the Olympics ended um, I joined Artemis Racing pretty much straight away and lived in America while the cup was on and we did a, a few days of training before the Worlds in Marseille last year and and then again this year you know Pete's joined Team New Zealand I'm um, with Artemis and uh, I think our time's quite precious now so we don't get the the big training camps that we've had down under in the past where we'd spend a few weeks together but you know the moment you show up to a regatta like this or like it here um, we'll always line up and do our practice racing together. So um, as much as we can, we keep the training partnership going, but uh, it's not as simple as it was, say, four years ago. Okay, Pete, you guys are pretty big rivals in this, uh, in this fleet, but you're not just rivals in uh, 49er sailing now. Uh, can you tell us a little about what you've been getting up to outside of the 49er class? Yeah, well obviously uh, since a year we've done a couple of extreme sailing series events and we haven't really actually done that much in the 49er to be honest. Uh, I think yesterday was uh, the first day I've had over 20 knots since probably Palmer, so a little bit ropey and a little bit uh, <coughs> underdone on that department. But uh, yeah, we seem to be making it up in other areas, learning learning different skills from different bits and pieces and no, re really enjoying the, the other sailing we're doing at the moment. It's um, yeah one of the things that... I think if I sail one boat too much, I'd kind of get a bit over it, to be honest. I really love to kind of keep moving around and keep sailing the, the cool classes at the moment. And I think it's something me and Nath really have in common. We, we always seem to come up against each other in, in different boats, whether it be the A-Class or the Moth or, or boats like that, and yeah, have a, have a really good battle in those as well. Yeah, I saw you guys down at, uh, in Takapuna in New Zealand for the ACAT Worlds, and it, and it seemed like if uh, you guys had a bit more well, a bit more preparation in your boats, it could have been go down to the line right at the end but uh yeah Lenny was Lenny was pretty handy so uh, I think we, we needed a few more weeks before we might have been able to give him a good nudge for the title but um yeah he, he definitely gave us a good spanking that week all right let's take a quick look back at you guys um in the America's Cup you got Nathan you started with Team Korea and and before you was Chris Draper who was a Olympic uh medalist in the 49er class so can you Tell us, is Team Korea, the, was, the, was that the way through to getting into the big teams as we've seen with Pete and yourself now? Yeah, I think when they, they rolled out the, the AC-45s <coughs> in 2011, when I got involved, sort of 2012, um, it, it gave guys like ourselves a chance to, to get in and mix it up with the best cup sailors in the world. And Chris Draper sort of led the way from the 40 on a class, leaving, joining Korea and then getting snapped up by Luna Rossa. And... Uh, when he left, I got a phone call asking if I wanted to, to join and it was six months from the Olympics. So I somehow fit that in the calendar leading up to London. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. You take one little opportunity 
and how far you can go with that. And then when I um, joined Artemis afterwards, Pete jumped on and did Team Korea for the last event in San Francisco. And uh, I think when, when, you know, sailors like Peter, myself and Chris, who are used to sailing skiffs, 49ers, moths, things that go fast, get that opportunity to race on the on the, the, the America's Cup or on the extreme 40s like Peter's at the moment, the skills go hand in hand. And that was really, you know, the way we got our, our foot in the door. And I think once you get your foot in the door, um, then you, you're able to, to really do um, a good job of making a big difference in those America's Cup teams. I think that shows us how deep the class is as well and how, how tight the racing is that when you jump in one of the other high performance classes like the, the AC45, for example, you, you do pick it up really quickly and and pick up you, you seem to have a lot of time to make your decisions and and tend to get them yeah pretty good so yeah, i think that's one of the the definite benefits of doing a lot of 49er sailing yeah all right cool well now i would this is a pretty important question because you guys have so much going on what is pete you can go first what is the top priority for you in these next is it america's cup or is it olympic gold medal or whatever can you tell us yeah i think for us it's definitely the olympic gold medal um yeah, our, our team's in the America's Cup's pretty pretty strong, pretty formed, and I'm definitely doing my part for that. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes in the design office and the and the mechanics of the whole the whole team that is uh yeah they're not going to launch the big boats until after the games anyway. So and yeah, we don't even have a venue yet. We don't have a lot of a lot of things are still up in the air on on the America's Cup side of it. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely the Olympic gold for us is a priority at the moment, and just to get as good a yachties as we can, and then worry about worry about that stuff afterwards. Okay, Nath. Yeah, I think you know as Pete says, there's um, there's no venue decided yet for the America's Cup. You know, the rules just come out, the protocols sort of still getting sorted, and um, you know, just like Pete, you know, Goobs and I, our our whole goal is to get better at sailing every time we can come to an event. Um, whether it's 49ers, Moths, A-Class, whatever it is, you know, as, as the helmsman and Gooby is the wing trimmer on the boat, we've just got to keep getting better at sailing. And, um, you know, our goal is to basically stop Pete winning a gold medal and try to win another one. So, uh, you know, <laughs> there's some serious rivalry going on at the moment and um, I think it's good for, for us personally and it's good for the class to, to have, um, you know, us racing as hard as we can against each other. And a lot of people forget there's... 80 other boats at this event who are also trying to win so it's not like a two horse race there's definitely uh, plenty of other boat guys to compete against but um, when you talk about what's a bigger goal the cup or the the olympics it's really hard to distinguish the two um, you know the the cup is a team of 130 people or 100 people working to to winning you know the, the america's cup and as a helmsman on the boat your job is to basically drive the boat when you when you go into the races but also to to develop the boat to sail the boat to test all the designers ideas give feedback to them and help that design process and uh, it, it's, it's such a huge task and it's an ongoing task and it's not basically you don't have to be there every single day doing it so you know Pete and I are probably really lucky that we get to do that part of the sport and then we get to come here and race in one design classes and and test us as sailors and our race knowledge and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good position to be in to be able to, to jump between the two and I think Pete and I are both fortunate that the teams that were involved in support you know, our decision to do this. Alright, thanks for that. Alright, so you guys, your rivalry doesn't <coughs> exist just on the water. We've seen, we've seen you guys do all sorts of things, I think uh, playing cards and all that, but um, we went to the go-karting track here in Helsinki before the Euro started and uh, we've got a clip just to show how fierce this uh, competition is. We're at the VM go-kart center near Helsinki Airport and we're here for a bit of, uh, bit of fun and, and relaxation. They're, they're rivals, they're really big rivals, but they're also really good friends, so it's a chance for the guys to, to um, keep the rivalry going, have a bit of fun. They're always at each other in everything they do. Gibby and Blair in particular.
Yeah, so coming here today, it's a bit of rival. It's a it's a rivalry and it's a fun, but it's it's almost like a continuum too because it's never ending for the boys. Like whether it's carts or forty niners or uh, or A class cats or moths or America's Cup boats, it just never stops. They're just at each other all the time, and it's a really good, healthy friendly, song. healthy rivalry. And um, what's up? They all push each other, and for me to. Okay, guys, thanks for coming on the show. Um, good luck today in the racing. And let's, uh, let's talk a little about, we've got live broadcast happening today until Sunday, every day. So if you guys want to stay up to date with it all, subscribe on YouTube. Tomorrow we'll have on the Magic Marine Morning Show, I'll be joined by the current one and two on the leaderboard, Ida Marie Nielsen and Martin Grail from their 49er FX fleet. But for now, we say goodbye. <coughs> I'm Bo Outeridge, and thanks for watching.